once upon a time there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Goodness, it takes you back, doesn't it? Well, I know it takes me back anyway. The tale of Peter Rabbit is one of the best known stories in the world. And Beatrix Potter, who wrote it, as we all know, is a legend. Her famous little books have been part of nearly everybody's childhood for the best part of a hundred years. Marvellous stories that children still find absolutely enchanting. All those wonderful little animal characters, remember? Jemima Puddle Duck, Mr. Jeremy Fisher, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, Tom Kitten, Samuel Whiskers. Ah! And the exquisite pictures. Beatrix Potter drew all the illustrations as well, you know her own pictures for her own stories. Well, now something is happening that a lot of people thought would be impossible. The Beatrix Potter stories are being transferred to the television screen. They're being animated. This is one of the most expensive projects ever undertaken by the British film industry. More than 300 top artists have been brought together for 18 months to work on a six-film production costing millions of pounds. It's intensive work, employing many skills, all of them requiring enormous patience, concentration and attention to detail. Were Beatrix Potter alive today, she would certainly be surprised. Many years ago, in the 1930s, she was approached to have her books animated, but she said no because the animation style of the time was too bold and simple to capture the subtle delicacy of her watercolour pictures. But this is not so today. These artists are using the latest technology to bring Beatrix Potter to the screen. And it's real Beatrix Potter, wonderfully authentic and just as charming as the original. They're creating or recreating the magical world that Beatrix Potter conjured for children so very long ago the wonderful world of Peter Rabbit and friends. The remarkable thing is that very few of Beatrix Potter's tales actually started off as books. Many were originally private letters written to entertain children of her friends and relatives. The letters usually told stories and she would draw pictures to help the stories along. Eventually, the mother of one of these children suggested that the letters might be made into books. So Beatrix borrowed the letters back, copied them out into an exercise book, and the rest, as they say, is history. Her stories were published and soon made her very famous indeed. The Tale of Peter Rabbit was Beatrix's first book. As we all know, it became a bestseller all over the world, and it is a classic of children's literature. So when it was decided to animate Beatrix Potter's books, Peter Rabbit just had to be the first. The natural companion story was the tale of Benjamin Bunny. The result is stunning and has been a huge international success. Mr. McGregor! Stop, thief! Gotcha! Rabbit's here somewhere. Stop! Stop! Thief! Oh, please help me. The gate! The gate! I can see the gate. Stop! Get back here, you wee beast! You. Stop, thief! By the way, pray remind me to get a new pie dish. Goodness, Peter! What do you think? Who's got your clothes? The scarecrow in Mr. McGregor's garden. That's what I came to tell you. Mr. McGregor has gone out in the gig, and Mrs. McGregor, and for the whole day. Come on, you can do it. 
<gasps> what should we do now? Quick, under here. Oh my goodness, she's coming. This is the beautiful English Lake District, which is the background for many of Beatrix Potter's stories. It was her favourite place. She married a local solicitor, William Healy's, and they lived here together for over 30 years. She painted pictures of so many of the local houses and put them in her storybooks. This is her own house, Hilltop, now a National Trust property and it appears in several of her tales. It's where Samuel Whiskers lived with his wife, Anna Maria. Tabitha Twitchett had three kittens, Tom and his sisters Moppet and Mittens. Kittens, where are you? They were always in mischief. Now, Tom, I know you're in here. Now come out at once. Rather smoky here. I cannot go back. <coughs> I've lost my dear son, Thomas. Oh, and I'm afraid the rats have got him. <gasps> I'm not afraid of rats. What? I'll help you find him and whip him too. He's a bad kitten, Cousin Tabitha. He made a cat's cradle of my best bonnet last time I came to town. What do you mean by tumbling into my bed, all covered with smuts? <laughs> He is rather a large kitten for his age. Will not this string be very indigestible, Anna Maria? Oh, I do wish you would keep your head still. It disarranges the dough so. Each of the videos opens with live action film that was specially shot in the Lake District by a feature film crew, morning, showing Beatrix Potter just as she was when she began to write her books. The part of Beatrix is played by the actress Neve Cusack, and here she is writing about two of her most famous characters, Tom Kitten and Jemima Puddle Duck. Her kittens in order. It's the last straw. Oh. Oh. Goodness me, I've not realized quite how you've grown. Oh dear, oh dear. You're breathing a little, Tom. Oh, <laughs> no, look. Madam, have you lost your way? Oh, 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 no, no, no. Oh, no, on the contrary, or oh, quite the contrary. The most civil of you to inquire. No. 
This is my summer residence. You would not find my earth, uh, uh, my, 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 my winter house, so convenient by half. <laughs> All the ingredients you required. I've got Come into plate. the house I'm... as soon as you've looked at your eggs. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Oh. Give me the herbs for the omelette, oh. oh. Bishop. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> Everything is here. This is the little Lake District village called Near Sori, where Beatrix lived and where she drew many pictures to use as backgrounds to her stories. The buildings are still there and several have signs to tell the many international visitors in which stories they appear. Pigling Bland lived here before he set off for the market. I almost forgot. Take these eight conversation peppermints. A special treat. Do heed the moral sentiments on them. And you come to no harm. So uplifting. What's that, young sirs? Stole a pig? Where are your licenses? There you are, Mr. Policeman. I knew it was somewhere. What's this? Two and a half conversation sweeties at three farthings? This ain't a license. I had one. Indeed, I had, Mr. Policeman. It's not likely they'd let you start without. I'm passing the farm. You may walk with me. Can can I come back too? I see no reason, young sir. Your papers are all right. But I don't want to go all on my own. Five miles to Market Town. Alexander! Wee, wee, wee! I can't find my way home! <laughs> I'm wet through and through! Six should be enough. Get that down, you, and be quiet. Now it says he, but then. It's too late in the season for curing bacon. please. I'm Pigling Bland. Uh, more porridge? Of course. How did you escape? He forgot to lock the cupboard. How did you come here? Stolen. What for? Bacon, hams. Why don't you run away? I shall. Off to supper. Beatrix was a great lover of animals, and she knew a great deal about them. Among the many pets that she kept as a child, there were rabbits, mice, frogs, bats, newts, lizards and squirrels. She studied them all closely and drew dozens of pictures of them. And even when she was grown up, she had a hedgehog. Oh, not just any old hedgehog, but known throughout the world as one that became, can you guess? Yes, Mrs. Tiggywinkle. I wonder who lives here. Smooth and hot, Forgive and me. rusty spot. Forgive me. Oh, who's that? I'm Lucy. 
I didn't mean to startle you, but who are you? And have you seen my pocket handkin? Oh, yes, if you please, um. My name is Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. Then away down the hill trotted Lucy and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle with the bundle of clothes. Hello, Mrs. The very first little animals they met were Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. Hello. Tell your mama you, Mama, I've done my very best with the jacket, but Thank as you, you can see. I will, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. And all the little animals and birds were so very much obliged to dear Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. So at the bottom of the hill, there was nothing left to carry except one little bundle. Mr. Jeremy Fisher, a most elegant and gentlemanly frog, lives down by the lake. Hi. Mr. Jeremy! Ladies! Ahoy! I was just about to leave your clean washing and collect from the porch as usual, Mr. Jeremy, sir. Oh, little mishap. That is to say, um, well, no, not so little, really. More of an accident. Um, uh, very nearly fatal. Skin of my teeth and all that, don't you know? <laughs> oh, you beastly creature! A minnow! A minnow! I have him by the nose! Ow! Oh! Oh, dear, no! Oh! My goodness! Oh, no! Ouch! What are you doing on the end of my line, Jack Sharp? Ouch! Get off my boat this instant! Ow! Impertinent <laughs> little rascals! Oh, what to do? Two such good friends. One cannot sit them down to butterfly sandwiches. And they do expect rather a good table. Mm, if only I could remember what I have in the pantry. Grasshoppers. Just the thing. I dare say I can find a bit of lettuce for Alderman Ptolemy. But... <laughs> Most of Beatrix Potter's tales were set in the Lake District, where she loved to walk with her favourite dog, Kep, but a few stories were not. The most famous of these takes place in the city of Gloucester. While staying there, she heard a fairy story. Could it have been true? The finest of wedding coats for the Mayor of Gloucester and a cream-coloured satin waistcoat trimmed with gauze and green worsted chenille. Yes, all is ready for the morning. All ready and sufficient, except for one item. And I am wanting one single skein of cherry-coloured twisted silk. is our last four pence. And Simkin, take a china pipkin and buy a penneth of bread, a penneth of milk, a, 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 and a penneth of sausages. And oh, Simkin, with the last penny of our four pence, buy me one penneth of cherry-colored silk. B but do not lose that last penny, Simkin. This is all Simpkins doing, the rascal. <laughs> Where is my twist, Simpkin? One and twenty buttonholes. One and twenty buttonholes. Of cherry coloured twist to be finished by noon. Oh, finished by noon. On Saturday. On Saturday. No Saturday. more twist. No more twist. And it is already Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh. Oh. 
She put out her horns like a little pile of cow. And run, tailors, run, or she'll have you all eaten now. Shall I come in and cut off your threads? Oh, no, Miss Pussy, you cut off our heads. No more twist. <laughs> Saturday, the mayor. <laughs> Beatrix Potter died over half a century ago, but I can't imagine she'll ever be forgotten. She was a wonderful artist and storyteller, of course, but she was a great deal more. She was a dedicated natural historian who might easily have been a professional scientist. And she became a prominent and expert farmer after she gave up writing. She was also deeply concerned with protecting the environment long before others became so interested in it. With the money that she made from her little books, she bought land and farmhouses in the Lake District to keep it safe from developers. The result was that when she died, she left 4,000 acres and 14 farms to the National Trust so that we can all enjoy it forever. Just as we can enjoy the marvellous stories and now the videos, of course, forever. Beatrix Potter. She was a truly remarkable woman.